So I invite you now into a worshipful space with the words of Reverend Lynn Unger. Breathe, said the wind. How can I breathe at a time like this, when the air is full of the smoke of burning tires, burning lives? Just breathe, the wind insisted. Easy for you to say if the weight of injustice is not wrapped around your throat, cutting off all air. I need you to breathe. I need you to breathe. Don't tell me to be calm when there are so many reasons to be angry, so much cause for despair. I didn't say to be calm, said the wind. I said to breathe. We are going to need a lot of air to make this hurricane together. Let us take a deep breath as we enter in to worship together. As we light the chalice this morning, I'd like to share words by the Reverend Molly Brewer. My beloved people, I cannot pretend, and so I will not tell you, that everything is okay right now, that there's no reason to be angry, that you must be optimistic or at peace. I cannot pretend these things, and so I won't tell them to you. But now, all I ask in this moment is that we remember the words of Rebecca Parker, there is a love. There's a love holding us. There's a love holding all. By the light of our chalice, let us rest in this love. As Unitarian Universalists, we strive to work towards spiritual wholeness through the actions that seek to accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions. One way that we do this work is by welcoming the voices of our black and brown siblings into our worship services each week. Martin Luther King Jr. needs no introduction. Today we lift up his vision for a more just world with the following. He said, modern psychology has a word that is probably used more than any other word in modern psychology. It is the word maladjusted. This word is the ringing cry to modern child psychology. Certainly, we all want to avoid the maladjusted life. In order to have real adjustment within our personalities, we want a well-adjusted life in order to avoid neuroses, schizophrenic personalities. But I say to you, there are certain things in our nation and in the world to which I am proud to be maladjusted and which I hope all people of goodwill will be maladjusted to. I say very honestly that I never intend to become adjusted to segregation and discrimination. I never intend to become adjusted to religious bigotry. I never intend to adjust myself to economic conditions that will take the necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few. I never intend to adjust myself to the madness of militarism, to self-defeating effects of physical violence. In other words, I'm about convinced now that there is a need for a new organization in our world. The International Association for the Advancement of Creative Maladjustment. Men and women who will be as maladjusted as the prophet Amos, who in the midst of the injustices of his day could cry out in words that echo across the centuries, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. And we have another piece by Aaron.
So our time for all ages today is more of a demonstration with a story rather than a story in itself. And hopefully this little experiment will work well. As we think about, as I think about living in this time, there are so many things that are just unbelievable to me, things that incite my anger. So we're going to imagine that these green bottles represent our bodies. And the little balloon off to the side is filled with all of those things that are external and the things internally that incite our anger, that really just make us frustrated beyond words. So this is a demonstration that when all of those elements start moving through us, sometimes they create this energy inside of us that starts to get bigger and bigger. And if those energies continue for a long period of time, what ends up happening is there could be an explosion where that energy, that concentrated energy just doesn't know where to go and we explode in ways that maybe we really hadn't intended. Another possibility is, again, this represents our being, all of the things that impact us, the things that happen on a daily basis, the things that are irritating, that build up to anger, the things like war or climate change or inept legislators or whatever it is, we can have that same experience where those things pour into our body. But instead of erupting and building up and having an outward expression, those energies are internalized and we take them in. And sometimes they end up resulting in depression. They end up resulting in compulsive behaviors that we use to suppress those feelings that we don't know what to do with. So today we're gonna to explore a little bit how do we use this energy? Because this is an energy that exists in the world. How do we find ways to effectively channel that energy in ways that are going to end up serving the common good? Our reading today was written by Sean Fink, a mover and shaker who lives in York, Pennsylvania, and who will be leading our worship service, is it next week? Is that correct? Next week. So please, we'll join with, him, with uh, Sean Fink. The aim of divine rage is not vengeance, but to reorder the world. These are the words of Valerie Carr. What if we began to collectively use a different language to define our anger? The anger that we shove down deep inside and hide. The anger at the systems that are failing us. And right now, there's plenty of anger sparking flames within us, and it's hard to hop on board the good vibes only mindset. Carr's words tap into that anger by giving it the descriptor of divine rage. Sacred, holy, angelic, spiritual. As it turns out, this divine rage comes directly from the goddess Kali of the Hindu tradition, the Dark Mother. She embodies rage to wipe out anything and everything that needs a fresh slate. We can embody Kali or our own inner rage when we're ready to create light out of darkness. I can think of no better time than right now to courageously turn up the volume on our divine rage let it rise up and begin to burn away the ropes and chains of oppression, capitalism, of greed, of polarization. I'm irresistibly reminded of Jesus driving the money changers out of the temple. What we would then have, what would be left, is love, divine love. It's time to let your inner rage turn 
and toss into the vast abyss of the everyday. This is how we create a revolution of love in its place. As creators, as entrepreneurs and leaders, as everyday human beings striving to bring peace to this weary world. This is how we become the courage makers we need to build a world where all beings can easily thrive and flourish. And how do we do this? We do this mindfully, intentionally, and powerfully, one step at a time, one heavy foot in front of the other, one deep breath at a time, one kind, soft hand offered to someone who needs it, one long day at a time followed by another and another, one angry moment at a time. We will follow the tiny breadcrumbs of love along the long, long road to justice and victory. And we will gather in our arms those who are willing and interested in this mission of compassion and bring them along with us, one newly opened heart at a time, because change doesn't happen overnight, but it happens. It's waking up one tired, weary, and scared soul at a time, and then another, and then another. We'll get through, as we always have. Our divine love made from the compost of our rage will help, help us put into place what we need to create a world of peace for everyone who wants it. And for now, we may take comfort in these words by D. Antoinette Foy. I used to extinguish under the weight of living, but one day I reached into my chest, dusted off my courage, and asked myself, where's your fire? I want to begin this morning by acknowledging that as a culture, we're not skilled at channeling our anger and outrage in ways that can ultimately be constructive. I know this was not something I was taught as a child. You may have a relationship with your own or others' expressions of anger that are hard to handle. We're going to be exploring this topic in a way that will ultimately lead us to a place where I hope we can view our anger as a source of divine love. As Sean so beautifully expressed in the reading this morning, she said, Our divine love is made from the compost of our rage, a source that can supply what we need to create a world of peace for everyone who wants it. With that in mind, I want to invite you to take care of yourself as you need to, if memories of misguided anger still harbor an open wound, get a cool drink of water, be mindful with your breath, and let yourself be held in the love that is holding all of us, all the time, even when we can't see it. When I think about how I see anger and outrage expressed in the world, and this has been mentioned already, I find that many people in this culture generally inhabit one of two expressions. I see many who are conflict avoidant. They may believe that the only way to be good is to subdue any wild and raging emotions that arise. They choose to be polite to avoid making waves so that the anger that they feel ends up potentially being suppressed, turned inward, perhaps showing up as depression or through compulsive behaviors like overeating or other kinds of consumption that can dull the intensity of the feelings that end up being just too much to feel. The other expression that is often seen is that of explosive reactivity which we saw with our yellow balloon this morning. Striking out in ways that can fuel harm to oneself or to others. Those who feel unseen, unheard, and finally explode as a result of so much neglect and misunderstanding. The barking heads who intentionally use provocative language and half-truths to inflame others. 
the people for whom others try to walk softly when around them so as to not spark a reaction that results in abusive language or physical outbursts. What gives me hope is the knowledge that there is a middle path. There are ways to transform anger and outrage, those things that we feel from the injustices in the world, into a clarion call that inspires creative responses rather than destructive outcomes. I have to tell you that I have a fraught relationship with anger, with other people's anger, with my own anger. As a child, I internalized messages in ways that led me to be afraid of anger. I hid when anger exploded in my household. I learned that it was safer to be polite, to be nice, to not make waves. I did what I wanted, but I did it under the radar, so I didn't have to confront. Without doubt, I am a continual work in progress. But as I have grown, I have seen both the negative impacts of this way of being has had on me, as well as the ways that I am inspired by others who channel their anger into an energy that ends up serving the common good. I've come to believe that it is okay to get mad. Not only is it okay, it is normal, and it's healthy to sometimes become totally furious, especially at injustices and bad faith. Reverend Adette Fulbright says that the key is to process anger, to let it move through and out into a considered action or a safe expression, or to simply let yourself sit with your anger so it can become a teacher to you. She encourages us to get to understand our anger, understand where it's coming from, how we hold it, how we interact with it, so it does not consume us, but instead becomes an energy that can lead us onward. As long as I continue to be afraid of anger, I'm unable to learn anything that my anger might be able to teach me. I think it's important to remember that in most cases, the people who have actually changed the world are people who were really pissed off. They were pissed off enough about something that they stopped trying to manage their anger or fix it or struggle with it. Instead, they found ways to embrace it. They found ways to harness their anger, to join with others, and to unleash that collective anger in creative ways to make change. And I love the piece um, that I read earlier from Dr. King when he said that there is a need for a new organization in the world, the International Association for the Advancement of Creative Maladjustment. I mean, that should be, you know, a cabinet position, right? We need to be reminded again and again that being maladjusted to the madness of militarism, to discrimination, to bigotry, to corrosive capitalism, and all things that stand in opposition to seeing the inherent worth and dignity of all beings is essential if we truly want to realize the beloved community. Social activist Valerie Carr says, the opposite of love is not rage. The opposite of love is indifference. Love engages all of our emotions. Joy is the gift of love. Grief is the price of love. Anger is the force that protects that which we love. So if you think about what you're angry about, 
dig deeper and think about what it is that you love so desperately that you are enraged and you're putting out all of this anger to say, enough. We cannot access the depth of loving ourselves or others without our rage. And as a collective, this is not something that we know how to do very skillfully. So, let us pause for a moment. Let us take a collective breath in and out. We need to breathe. We need a lot of air to make a hurricane of change together. In and out, in and out. So I'm going to invite us to do something that might feel risky, but if we let ourselves jump in, I think we might be surprised by what we find. Let's give ourselves permission right now to name those things that piss us off. Let us name the injustices we see in the world. We cannot change the things we cannot give a name to. Let this be a teaching moment. I'm gonna start off. So friends at home, use the chat feature to name the things that invoke your anger. Friends here in person, let yourself shout out your outrage, and this is the risky part, right? We don't do this. We don't verbalize what we get angry about. We're polite, we're nice. So challenge yourself. Don't worry if you're shouting over each other. Anger is like that. Big things, small things, we cannot change what we can't name. And remember, Anger is a force that protects what we love. So whatever's coming up at the center of that is something that you care deeply about. So I'm gonna start off and you are invited to shout out as well. It makes my blood boil that our healthcare, healthcare system is so screwed up. Even with decent insurance, I just paid $375 for a simple blood test, and that was out of my pocket after insurance. And I have insurance. So somebody, how, who has something to shout out here? What are you pissed off about? Come on. Inept administrators who can't run the school. Yep, yeah. all right. I hate to imagine the world that my grandchildren are inheriting. Will there be a habitable world for them to live in? Yes, I agree. I think our consumption of the planet. Consumption of the planet, inept administrators. What else? What else are you pissed off about this morning? Rude senators. Rude senators. Rude yeah, I get so angry at the stupidity and destruction of war. How is it possible that news reports can actually discuss the possibility of a nuclear war? Straight faces on the camera. Somebody else, Jason. I, I have many from chat, so they're not mine. Okay. I have uh, from Janet, autocrats like Putin and Modi in India, Eleanor, Putin's selfishness and evil side, uh, Ariane, indifference, Lorraine, lies, Betty Baker, most recently the anger thrust against Judge Jackson at the Supreme Court hearing. And again, greed, white supremacists. I am enraged that we have become a nation of consumers rather than compassionate citizens. Anybody else? Anybody else feel their blood boiling right now? Inability to get vaccinated. Inability to get vaccinated. Unwillingness, Unwillingness to get vaccinated. Yes. yes. 
That ties right into the next one on my list. I'm furious that anyone thinks it makes sense to ban books to tell the truth about racism in this country with folks passing legislation that keeps them asking us to swallow our anger, to make nice and just pretend it never happened. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot, whether it's on an immediate basis in your school, in your home, or all of the things that are going on in the world. These are things that we are pissed off about because we care so deeply. We care about relationships. We want the good of the commonality of humanity to be served. And we see so many ways that there are obstacles. It is right to be angry about them. It is important that we're furious about them because the opposite of love is not our rage, it is our indifference. Breathe with me. Long, slow breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. Divine love is made from the compost of our rage. Breathe in. Breathe out. The key is to process anger. Let it move through you and out. Now that we have named what angers us, let us name ways that we will channel this most powerful energy into service for the common good. Again, friends at home, type in the chat. Here in the sanctuary, shout it out in person. I'm going to start off. I will embrace my anger when it arises. I will find ways to ask it, what can it teach me? What do I love so deeply that this rage has risen to the top. Anybody else? What will you do? How will you channel this energy? I will keep educating myself about those who run for elected office, and I will support those who are working to serve the common good. Anybody? I'll keep talking to friends and join together in a collective so we can channel that energy in a constructive way together. I Shannon will continue to protect the intellectual rights of our children so they can explore the world on their own and come to their own understanding, their own truth and meaning about the world. Jason. I will never give up and accept wrong. I will use my voice to speak out about the ills of the world. I will join with others to find ways to be creatively maladjusted. Jason. Eleanor says, I will use the power of my voice to tell my government officials my beliefs and keep their hands off me. She's referring to, you know, uh, women. Yeah going to reach out to our legislators and let them know that they cannot control our bodies. They cannot control us. Should I keep sharing, Chad? Yep, absolutely. Many, keep going. Many, I will listen for understanding and harness my community to lift up justice. Janet, work to break down walls between people in my community as well as walls that divide people all over the world. I will show up. I will extend myself to those who need a soft hand to hold. Anybody else? I will vote. I will vote. I will let anger move through me and out into considered actions and safe expressions. Anybody else, Bill? I'll help our Supreme Court justices learn how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
And if you didn't hear that at home, Bill's going to help our Supreme Court justices learn how to read. There is a lot that we can do. We are not impotent. We do have power, and we can use that power. We can channel that energy in ways that serve the common good. And we have to do our work so we are not afraid when it gets to that place and somebody's close to erupting. What can we do to hold a space for them to acknowledge? Ask, what is it that you love so deeply that you are fiercely trying to protect right now? I'm going to end this litany here with, I will practice gratitude. I will remember to laugh. I will remember that love holds everything. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. For all who are quick to anger, may you use that fiery energy in the service of loving, creative, powerful efforts toward change for the common good. For those of you who have been wounded by anger, who swallow their own fire, may you find ways to kindle those sparks of recognition at the ills of the world and use the passion that arises to correct that which stands in opposition to love. May we commit ourselves to trusting that fire within. May we all recognize the gift of action that anger can offer us. May we use it with wisdom and with care. Our closing hymn is the fire of commitment as performed by the Foothills Unitarian Choir. So let that fire of commitment stir your heart. Know that you have those that you can join together with to channel that energy. Reach out to others to help them when they might feel that they're ready to explode. Our closing words are the words of Reverend Otis Moss III. He is the senior pastor of Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago. He says, if you dance long enough, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. It is the job of every preacher to teach the congregation to dance in the dark. Do not let the darkness find its way in you but dance in the dark. Let us turn our anger, our outrage into a dance of liberation as we move through the darkness of these times. As we extinguish the chalice, please join in this unison response. We extinguish these flames, but not the light of truth the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and in our hands until we are together again. And now let us join together for our closing ritual.